Hey, what's up, Cody? Uh, this quick demo video for you for your uh, Saber Forge ASP. And this is a rebuild. And then also I made you a heavy grade NeoPixel blade um, or a thick, just a thick walled blade. So it's a thick walled one inch diameter NeoPixel blade. Um, it does have my own PCB holder on it, but this uh, actual PCB is from Custom Saber Shop and then uh, some premium strips in here. Uh, let's go over your Saber Forge ASP. So this was a rebuild. You did, you know, when you originally sent this to me before, you had a Profi in it with a floating chassis. You couldn't get to your chassis. Uh, the threads were seized. So I kind of uh, fixed that for you, uh, made some other things work for you, sent it back. That's all you wanted at that time. Um, and then you had some more problems with the actual build. So you sent it back to me and we decided to put a CFX in the sky. So what I did was I got rid of uh, the floating chassis idea. Um, I don't like floating chassis unless the hilt only opens from the pummel cap. That's, I mean, that's, uh, that's an instance there where you can't get away from that. Um, but if you have a hilt that opens up in the middle like this guy, uh, I see absolutely no reason to have a floating chassis in here. So this opens up right here. I'll show you. So that pummel slides off nice and smooth here's your chassis so it does say solo sabers right there but you got a 28 millimeter base speaker and here's your board so if you see it up close there's your board it's a press fit down into this shelf and then I modeled out this shelf right here so that you could slide your uh, SD card in and out and not ever have to pop the uh, board up but in case you do ever have to pop it up if you do it continually and you find over time that the press fit down into the shelf here is wearing out a little bit, I went ahead and modeled in this uh, rib right here, which is for like a piece of tape, like vinyl piece of tape or electrical tape, something to assist you in holding the board down and then not get in the way of sliding the pommel on and off. So that's what that's for right there. But as it is right now, this is a really tight press fit in here and I don't think that you'll ever, ever have to use that. That's just there just in case. Um, the way I modeled this chassis was I, as I was installing it, I had to put the board in first or the battery in first. The battery went through the back and to the front and then I installed the speaker right behind it. So you'll never see the battery. It's in there though. Um, it's just locked in place. So that's what's going on there. So that being said, if you're not putting any kind of uh, sound fonts on your board or messing with your board, if you're just going to play with this guy, you'll probably never even have to take this pummel off um, because we did keep your kill key right here. I just gave you a new, uh, a new recharge port. Uh, I didn't like the old one. It was pretty beat up, uh, pretty ate up. So I just replaced it, put this guy in its place, did keep your kill key. And then I replaced also your switch here. So you have a, uh, this is a one button setup and I'll go through the functionalities of this button here in a second. And then um, of course you got your crystal chamber here. So I went through, I went through all the way to the front. I just gutted all of the wires and everything and started fresh. So you've got your NeoPixel pins right there. If I can put that in front of the camera, you can kind of see them in there, right? You'll see it, oh, there we go, in the light. You got your seven pin NeoPixel connector right there. Another thing I thought was interesting is when I took out your NeoPixel connector, you only had three pins on the one that was in here. Um, I've never heard of NeoPixel run off three pins. It's always been seven, or if you're running three strips in your blade, which uh, which almost nobody ever does, then you're gonna want the full, um, the full 11 pins. Um, so that was weird, but we got rid of that. So we'll put the pommel cap back on, or the pommel on. Slides in nice and smooth. Screws right in, just like that. And then we'll pull your kill key. Activation. You got a nice light up on your crystal there. Hold it to turn it off. So the way I wired this up was, uh, it was very similar to the one that you had in there, but uh, before you had a couple, you had uh, three NeoPixels on a strip, kind of bent, just kind of floating in there. 
I took those out. Crystal chamber only needs one NeoPixel if it's wired in correctly. So I put that guy right up underneath this crystal, adhesed it with, I did use a little bit of super glue in there like that picture I showed you, but that one pixel strip or that one pixel is just lighting up that crystal crazy. I mean, that's a good shine on your crystal. And now for your blade. So just looks like a normal blade, right? Um, I did sand this quite a bit right here just to make sure it slid in and out of your blade chamber nice and smoothly. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And I'm gonna have to use the uh, blade retention screw that I'll show you. You can put whatever CFX sound fonts you want on here. This one that I put on here to do this test video uh, needs a new LED file, so that's why it's making that beep right before every time I turn it on. But you have two set screws here. So this one is actually holding in your NeoPixel PCBs. You'll never want to mess with that guy. This is the one that's going to be your blade retention right here. But wake the, wake the board up. So when you turn the blade on, just tap it for blaster deflex. And you'll see them randomly on the blade. Or you could go fast. Now to get blade lock up, if you hit this blade and hold down this button at the same time, you'll get blade lock up. You gotta do it right though. Let me turn it back on. There you go. It's right there. Now to change colors, when you've got the blade on, you'll want to hold down the button and twist your wrist and then let go. Now you can twist the hilt like this and cycle through your colors. And you'll notice when we're cycling through blade colors, you're cycling through crystal colors too, because everything you do is going to mimic this blade, or this crystal is going to mimic this blade. So we'll go with like a blue. If you find one that you like, just tap the button. Just like that. Now your crystal's blue. Looks pretty sick. And your blade is blue. So when we turn that off and then back on. Right? Now to change blade effects, because I gave you about 22 when the blade is on, hold down the button and twist your wrist, but keep the button held down. Keep holding it. Now you can twist the hilt again to get different blade effects. You'll notice it really well over here on your crystal, but in, in, real, in, uh, in person, you can see it on this blade very well. So some are subtle, some aren't so subtle. See that one? Just cycling through a couple of different ones here. I'm gonna tap that, that's a rainbow blade. Now if I stay on that rainbow blade, you can watch your crystal change colors. Right? So to get to your sound fonts, when the blade is off, hold down the button. Sound bank selection. Now we're gonna cycle through them by just pressing the button. Each one of these is a sound font, right? I gave you a Britney Spears font, but I'll let you play with that one. <laughs> My wife and I made that. So when you find one you like, just hold the button down. There you go. And then we'll just put the kill key in it. Turns everything off. 
So that is your saber, sir. Hopefully you feel like this came out a lot better than what it was. Um, you know, uh, blades looking good, hilt looks good, everything's solid. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks.